Hey, what's up guys? So, time to get my car upgraded. We're gonna be installing a bunch of new hardware and kind of upgrading some of the existing uh, equipment that I've got installed here. Now, to get this upgrade done, I'm actually here at Systems Unlimited in Bellevue, Washington. They are a higher-end custom installer that specializes in installing radar detectors and laser jamming equipment and audio equipment, etc. Uh, and in this video, I basically wanna go over what the install process is like. Now, I've done a video recently that actually goes into uh, what all this equipment is and kind of the upgrades themselves. You can check out that video if you like. Uh, and in this follow-up video, we're basically gonna be going over, well, the install process itself. I'm actually curious to see kind of some of the tricks of the trade and things that they can do to make this stuff not only install and work well but also look really good too and so in this video let's go over the install process and see what it's like actually getting all this new equipment here installed all right so starting off let's begin with the radar detector so i've got my radar detector up here hardwired and something that i notice a lot is sometimes the suction cup will fail and the radar detector will actually fall off the windshield and one of the issues that i've had is that this uh, locking tab right here is actually well it broke off before and so uh, if my radar detector would actually fall off the windshield, it wouldn't lock into place like this and it would just fall off and I would come back to the car with the detector hanging or laying on the ground. And so for that reason, I just had him uh, recrimp the connector here plus adjust the length here. Uh, there's a little bit more slack in the cable now so I can adjust it as needed to pull it out or put it back in as necessary. Additionally, we added a new USB type C hardwire cable, which I can use for the Rodenso DS1 or the uh, whenever that comes out. Additionally, I can also take that cable and plug it in here to my GoPro, which I'm often running here on the blend mount like this. So I can just plug in that same cable. Uh, and now I've got, well, a GoPro <laughs> powered uh, to record the radar detectors here on my windshield, which I'm often doing for tests and reviews and stuff. And now I don't have to have a cable actually hanging down my dash like this. It's just a nice clean cable running up like that. Next, let's move on and talk about laser jammer upgrades. I did some upgrades to both the ALP and to the TMG system. Starting off with the ALP, I wanted to go ahead and take the old TX heads off my car and replace them with the new TX black sensors, which improved the jamming capabilities here with the ALP. Now, out in the front of the car, I've got these uh, special modules that are built to house a bunch of different laser jammer heads. Uh, and it wasn't really possible to remove the old TX heads, and so we actually had to uh, trim off and shave off part of the twist lock connector in order to remove the connector from the laser module. Additionally, they had to do the same thing with the new TX head as well in order to slide the cable back into place. Afterwards, of course, they uh, covered everything back up, protected it with heat shrink, and made sure everything was good to go. Uh, this has actually been kind of a common complaint with ALP, the uh, twist lock connectors. Uh, they're thicker and larger than some of the other ones, like the TMG connectors, for example, and I've noticed a lot of installers sometimes would have issues actually running cables, maybe through the firewall or through any openings and stuff. I mean, Escorts, TMGs, a lot of other ones actually have thinner cable runs than the ALPs do, so pros and cons to anything. Now, as for the TMGs, we want to go ahead and upgrade them to the newer VPR setup. So basically uh, swapping out the CPU uh, as well as all the front laser jamming heads. The previous system had actually died on me, so I haven't been able to do any videos on it. So uh, I now have a working TMG system again. Now, upgrading the heads was pretty straightforward. They basically pulled out the old heads and then they slid the new heads into the same place. But what was surprising was taking a look at the older heads, they had been pretty heavily discolored. And this was the case on all three of my heads up front. Uh, apparently reading online, other people have also reported similar issues. It may be due to the fact that the TMGs rely on metal heads instead of kind of plastic casings. Um, I don't think it's going to affect anything performance wise, but that was definitely something that surprised me. Now, as for the CPU itself, I used to have some nice magnets in there and they went ahead and uh, just go ahead and put the magnets back into the CPU, which makes it really easy for me to go ahead and just connect it back into my car. Additionally, because we added the new VPR heads that work differently than the regular heads and now not all the heads are the same, I went ahead and just labeled the VPR heads as well. So I know kind of what cable runs to where and how to plug it into the CPU. And as kind of a surprising bonus, I also found that the uh, TMG CPU and the TrueSpeed S laser gun both fit into that same pocket and they fit in together at the same time. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, once we got everything installed in the shop, I just pulled out the app on my phone, uh, ran the update software and the app, and it just updated my system while it was in the car. So that was definitely convenient. Next, taking a look at my dash, they also upgraded the uh, wireless charging phone mount for me over here. It's based off your standard Apple mag mount charger and they wrap the uh, white wire with protective wrap uh, that also makes it black. And so now I think it looks way nicer in my car and it blends a lot more cleanly. They also made this phone charger ignition triggered. You see all the fuses up here at the front of the car, they're accessible, but they're all on all the time, even when the car is off. And I wanted something that goes on and off with the car. Now it turns out the cigarette lighters in the car, there's one in the back that we actually removed for some of the upgrades in the past. Um, that's ignition triggered. And so they use that as part of a relay system to trigger uh, when these power sources can turn on and off. Now that relay was also used to create some ignition triggered hardwire cables for a bunch of other expansion stuff that I have here in my car. Like for example, uh, right up here behind the screen, 
screen on my car, uh, I've actually got this USB power brick that I use to power anything on the windshield, whether it's another dash cam for testing or a GoPro or a phone charger or a phone mount or something, all that stuff I'd have powered up there. Now, one of the issues was before I used to actually run the power cable down here like this. And so it was kind of ugly actually having the cable hanging down. And so uh, they created a hard wire for me. One of the issues with that is that the factory cable is actually pretty thick and there wasn't an easy way to actually run the cable uh, into the car without actually having to cut away a portion of the dash. And so what they did is they actually cut the cable and they soldered on a thinner cable that they can use to actually tuck uh, into the car. And so now everything looks clean and hardwired and it's able to fit in without having to cut my car up or anything. Now, the toughest thing about this part of the install, though, is that with my car, in order to have enough space to run that cable into the dash, they actually had to pull the entire dash apart. Additionally, I've also hardwired the uh, cigarette lighter power cable that I have installed here next to the passenger seat, which I use to power radar detectors for testing or dash cams or whatever else. They also went ahead and hardwired that for me as well. So again, everything is now much cleaner. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, they also uh, tapped in that new uh, USB Type-C power cable here that I use for GoPros and DS1 and everything else up here uh, on my windshield. Additionally, they also made it a lot easier for me to do further expansion here in the future. If you take a look inside, you'll see that there's now these uh, new expansion cables that are installed, uh, one for power and one for ground. These are also ignition triggered because uh, all the fuses here are hot all the time. So now in case I ever want to hardwire something else, uh, I've got the option right there. They put one here on the driver's side and there's also a second one over on the passenger side for me. Next, let's move on and talk about dash cams. So uh, for the longest time, I've been running older generation Black P dash cams, a four channel setup, front, rear, left, and right. Uh, and they were the older ones that I haven't been able to upgrade because they use the older style power cable. And so I really wanted the newer ones. And in order to do that, we had to uh, uh, pull the old power cables and run the new ones. And because all the battery packs are in the rear of the car, it was really easy to remove the uh, rear power cable, just, well, pull it out uh, and then put the new one in place and then just kind of tape and protect everything back up. Uh, the front cable is a little bit tougher because there's so many cables that run up uh, to my car. And so for that reason, I actually had them just not bother wasting time trying to unwrap everything and remove it. So I actually just had them leave the old power cable there and just kind of tuck it out of the way. Uh, and then we ran the new power cable instead to power the new dash cam. And so now I've got uh, a Blackview DR900X Plus up front. Uh, I was originally planning on doing a DR900X, kind of the older one in the rear, just reusing some of the stuff I already had, but we ran into an issue, which I'll talk about in just a second. And so now I bought a second DR900X Plus, which is now sitting in the rear. Now I also wanted to upgrade my Wi-Fi at the same time. I'd been using this kind of OBD2 dongle for a while um, to get Wi-Fi on the car, which has been okay, but it's been kind of flaky. And so for that reason, we removed that. Uh, and then we grabbed a CM100 LTE that plugs into the Blackview dash cam. So the Blackview dash cam can actually serve as the Wi-Fi hotspot for everything in my car. Now, the plan originally was to uh, have it plugged into the front dash cam, but once we got to doing the install, we found that the cable was just barely too short <laughs> to make it to the front dash cam. And so for that reason, uh, we wound up redoing things and actually having it plugged into the rear dash cam uh, in this little pocket kind of on the rear hatch part of my car. So now it's completely hidden and out of the way, but if I ever need to grab the module to change SIM cards or whatever else, there's just Velcro in the back, I can pop it out and it's really easy to uh, access the CM100 LTE and then put it back into place and cover it up as needed. Now, the older DR900X that I was going to be using in the rear, it only supports uh, one device being connected to it for a Wi-Fi hotspot, whereas the new DR900X Plus allows up to five devices, and I want a bunch of stuff connected, not just the other dash cam connected to the first one, but, I mean, radar detectors and phones and all this other stuff too, right? So for that reason, I bought a second DR900X Plus in the rear, which is plugged into the CM100 LTE, so now I've got, well, the latest and greatest dash cams front and rear and left and right for my four-channel setup. And overall, I'm really happy with the new video quality upgrade that I've got with the new DR900X Pluses. Next, taking a look at the battery packs to power the dash cams, I upgraded this as well. Uh, in the past, I've been running three battery packs, and I've got two others that I've been using for testing, the uh, Black Box My Car BI750 and the expansion. Uh, and we went ahead and got this installed in the car. So now I have five battery packs installed. Now, this was actually pretty cool. In order to get them installed, they wanted to create a, a special box to house the battery packs. And in order to do this, they cut out a slot in the foam that goes around the spare tire uh, and they made a pocket for the dash cam batteries. Then they built a box to house the batteries themselves. They also wanted to uh, make custom port openings for all the different cables. And in order to do that, uh, they used a CNC router to custom cut the panel where all the cables are going to run. This box is a perfect fit for the batteries. Plus there's a little bit of extra space behind the batteries that they left, uh, which makes it easier for me to grab the batteries as needed. Plus they installed this removable foam wedge, which I can slot in to keep things uh, secure and tight when driving. And of course I can remove it as needed to pull out the batteries. 
Now, they also caught an issue that I didn't actually even notice uh, with the batteries, specifically with one of the power cables. You see, if you take a look at the uh, hardwire cable that's gonna be running from the battery to the dash cam, uh, it's not a good connection. In fact, you'll notice some of the wires are actually loose and they could potentially touch and cause a short uh, and cause the whole system to fail. And to prevent that from happening and ensure that the power connection is reliable, he actually pulled the connector apart and re-soldered all of the individual connections for that power cable. Then once he was done with that, he also added some additional protection to the cable as well, just to ensure that everything stays solid. Now that said, once we got everything wired up, I was still having some issues getting my dash cams to work properly. We found after troubleshooting, after I went home, that it turns out there's an issue with the battery pack as well. And shout out to Black Box My Car to help me troubleshoot um, and actually send me a replacement battery. I've got a replacement coming in the mail to fix the battery pack uh, that was defective. It's now gonna be going back to them. Um, and while we were actually troubleshooting it, they helped me kind of fix some of the uh, cable stuff to at least get my dash cams recording when driving, even if the battery wasn't able to provide power to the uh, dash cams while parked. And so uh, they did everything they needed to do with the cables, actually made it better. It turns out there's an additional issue with the battery pack, totally not their fault as well, but they've been doing an awesome job with uh, helping me troubleshoot, helping me work around the issues. And then I'm gonna be heading back uh, to get everything finalized once I get the new battery pack in. So again, a big shout out to uh, Systems Unlimited for all the troubleshooting stuff and to Black Box My Car. The BI750, it is discontinued now, it's no longer available, but I figured I've got the battery packs anyways, and so I went ahead and installed it regardless, just to put them to good use. Then additionally, for uh, one of the battery packs that was already there, I'm going to be repurposing it to be uh, an expansion battery pack specifically to use when I'm uh, testing different uh, dash cams temporarily. You see, installing a dash cam on the windshield, it's really easy, and then you just, you know, plug in the power cable or something, but if you want to get that dash cam hardwired for power to get your parking recording, that's been a little bit trickier to do, and so for that reason, we're going to be having kind of a permanent expansion capability to plug in different dash cams uh, when I'm using them for testing. And to make it easier for me to uh, kind of temporarily hardwire in dash cams for testing, you'll notice there's this new module that's installed uh, right here uh, in my center console. And this, uh, this is pretty cool. Check this out. So we attached it here with magnets so I can remove it as needed. And then it just clips right into place. And it has these little connectors that pop up like this and then uh, three of them. So I'm gonna be able to do uh, one for ground, one for uh, the battery connection, and the other one is your uh, ignition triggered source like this. So you can see uh, the cables actually run in here from one of the battery packs in the rear of the car. Uh, and then I can just open these guys up, uh, plug in, boom, 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 three different cables, pinch them back down, and then bam, I now have my uh, hardwire installed uh, for different dash cams that I wanna install on the windshield for testing. So that is definitely gonna be super convenient. And so as you can see, there's a lot of really cool stuff that's been installed here. I really like some of their uh, creativity, some of their ideas, like the custom stuff that they built, how they built it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that they built that's definitely way better than anything I can do on my own. So I'm super grateful for their help. Uh, and overall, yeah, these are some really, really nice upgrades. There's some things that I've been wanting for a long time. Uh, there's some new things that recently came in. And so uh, all in all, it makes it much easier for me to do a lot of testing now with kind of the newer equipment that's installed without having a bunch of cables running all the way down my dash and everything to have a nice clean looking install uh, and just to have everything upgraded and cleaned up overall. And so I'm really, really happy with this install. And if you're looking for an installer in the Seattle area as well, you can reach out to Charles at Systems Unlimited. Uh, I'll put his information down in the video description so that you can check it out. Out. Um, and yeah, they did a great job. I mean, I learned a ton <laughs> watching them work. We had plenty of time to talk about just everything, countermeasures, installations, etc. So that was definitely really cool. Very eye-opening. And yeah, they seemed like they did a really good job. I was pretty happy with them. And so... Yeah, that's my new, freshly upgraded install here in my car. So... Yeah, that's it for now. I'll put more information to everything, all the equipment and all this kind of stuff. I'll link to that down in the video description below if you'd like to know about some of the equipment that we used or again, if you want to reach out to them or anything else like that. So yeah, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are all doing great and I'll see you in the next video.